Welcome to 10 Minutes in the Text. Today we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. This is going to feel a bit like a speed round because it's a longer chapter. So we're just going to go ahead and push through it. So here we go. If you would bear with me in a little foolishness, do bear with me. So here Paul's saying, listen, I want you to listen to what's going on here. And he's emphasizing with this, do bear with me. For I feel divine jealousy for you. Oh, divine jealousy. Okay, we're not supposed to be jealous, so why is he connecting it to God? Well, well, he says, okay, for you. So it's this jealousy for you. Let's see where he takes that. Since I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. Fascinating language here. Okay, betrothed. So I married you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. Okay, so what's what's Paul talking about here? Well, he's looking at here, we know... Um, with this that uh the bride of christ is the church right so oftentimes that's the language that's used but i'm afraid that as the serpent deceived eve by his cunning your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to christ okay so paul shares his fears here that just as in the garden as the serpent deceived eve by his cunning He's afraid your thoughts will be held, led astray from sincere and pure devotion to Christ. So his worry is that the bride, the church, is going to be pulled away. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you, have, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put with it readily enough. You put up with it readily enough. Okay, so here's what he's saying here. Let's look at the things he says. So first, if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus, right? Okay, so that's one, right? Then the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, that's two. Or if you accept a different gospel, three. So he looks at these three things. <clears throat> so different Jesus, a different spirit, a different gospel. So a different Jesus, think about this is... Um, changing Jesus for um, human needs, right? So not who uh, who Jesus has been told to be, but you know this is the Jesus we want. Um, so for the needs of what we want, a different spirit. All right. So in baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit. So is there a different spirit that has come along? Something that's contrary to that Holy Spirit? And three, a different gospel. Um, let's call this the gospel plus. All right. So that's the gospel plus means, oh, it's this. You get the gospel, but it's also, it's also, it's also, right? So it's the gospel plus, the gospel and. And then he says, you put up with it readily enough so saying you listen to these things that here are three major things indeed i consider that i am not in the least inferior to these super apostles he's he's given these these false teachers a name even if i am unskilled in speaking i am not so in knowledge indeed in every way we have made this plain to you in all things so basically paul's saying here they might they speak better than me but their message isn't better Now, think about what Paul's talked about so much through this, as he's looked and he said, you know, our message, where does our message come from? Jesus. So it's not the one who delivers it or the perfection of their speech, but instead, it's about the message. So continuing on, or did I commit a sin in humbling myself so that you might be exalted because I preached God's gospel to you? What here? free of charge okay so here Paul's saying listen I brought you the gospel and that gospel was free I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you now this is interesting all right this is some hyperbole robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you so think of this as mission dollars right so mission money 
other churches gave me money not to serve them but to come and serve you so paul's saying listen i yeah these other guys have money but these churches gave me money to come serve you so it would be robbing them if i show up and don't deliver the message or you ignore my message when i was with you and was in need i did not burden anyone for the brothers who came from macedonia supplied my needs so he's saying listen yeah, these guys, these super apostles from above, um, in the earlier verse, like they show off their money. But I didn't ask you for money because I had been given what I needed. So he said, I refrained and will refrain from burdening you in any way. So my guess is that these super apostles were asking for money. As is the truth of Christ is in me, this boasting of mine will not be silenced in the regions of Achaia. So Achaia is where Corinth is located. And why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. So he's coming back around. This rhetorical here, right? So this rhetorical question followed immediately by the answer, right? So don't think I don't love you. Of course I do. What I am doing, I will continue to do in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their boasted mission they work on the same terms as we do okay so again this is those super apostles right he's coming in here saying they claim in their boasted mission that they work the same as we do now watch what he follows up but for such men are false apostles deceitful workmen disguising themselves as apostles of Christ all right this is a big deal disguising themselves as apostles of Christ and no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light this is a lot of this is a big deal here let's uh, let's pull out the yellow what does Satan do disguises himself as an angel of light and for us to learn here is is Paul's reminding us that um, the enemy tries to look good but he's not so we have to be aware so too he's saying same thing with these super apostles so it is no surprise if his servants also oh he's hitting hard no surprise if his servants so who's the his satan's also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness he is listen this is big what is he saying here these super apostles these ones he's given a hard time to Who are they? They are his, Satan's, servants. Straight up, heretics, workers of the devil, of the enemy. So, their end will correspond to their deeds. Boom. I repeat, let no one think me foolish, but even if you do, accept me as a fool so that I may boast a little. What I'm saying is this, what I'm saying with this boastful confidence, I say not as the Lord would, but as a fool. So Paul's saying here, listen, as I'm boasting, you're going to think I'm a fool, because I'm not like these other guys. Since many boast according to the flesh, I too will boast, for you will gladly bear with fools, being wise yourselves. For if you bear if someone, for if you bear it, if someone makes you slaves, makes slaves of you, or devours you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or strikes you in the face. So he's saying, listen, you can accept me as a fool, because look what you've already accepted, is these people who have made you these things. To my shame, I must say, we are too weak for that. So Paul's saying, listen, we can't do that. We're, you know, we're too weak for that. Our message is not to do these things to you. Our message is the gospel. But, whatever anyone else dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool, I also dare to boast of that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Okay, this is a big passage. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they offspring of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I'm a better one. I'm talking like a madman. <laughs> I like this. I am talking like a madman. Boom, please, understand. I'm pushing the edges here. 
with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. So he gives his qualifieds here of why he's a greater servant. Look at all these things that have happened to me. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. Okay, I want to I dive that. I want to look that up in my commentary. Okay, what is this forty lashes plus one? What's the historical significance there? Three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, a night and a day I was adrift at sea, on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure, and apart from other things, there is the daily pressure of me on the anxiety for all the churches. So Paul's feeling all these things plus anxiety. Who is weak? Am I not? And am I not weak? Who is made to fall? And am I so? Am I not indignant? For if I must boast, so this goes back to last chapter, I will boast in the Lord. So if I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, he who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. At Damascus, the governor under King Aretas was guarding the city of Damascus in order to seize me. But I was let down in a basket through a window and wall, in the wall, and escaped his hands. So here we have basically Paul coming through and saying, listen, my boasting, my qualifieds for being um, a minister of the gospel, of bringing you the true gospel, is like, look at all these other people. What they're talking about is look at how great we are. And I'm telling you, I'm not great. And that actually qualifies me because what he's saying is, again, I will show my weakness because in other places we'll see in scripture in my weakness, he is stronger. He keeps pointing back to Jesus. He says these super apostles, these great leaders um, that have come before you, they're all focusing on themselves. But I'm here to tell you it's about Jesus. So that's what this chapter is bringing us to. Looking forward to diving into it with you on Sunday. Have a good week.